One more example in uh, two-dimensional space before we get into three-free space. And again, the equations are given in vector form. So the first thing to do is put them in parametric form. So x would be 4 minus t, y would be 3 plus 2t, x would be negative 1 plus 3s, and uh, y would be 13 minus 6s. And so we equate them just like we did in the previous example. Uh, 4 minus t gets equated to negative 1 plus 3s, and 3 plus 2t would get equated to 13 minus 6s. Again, we're trying to find the value of t that you put in the first one. Uh, that gives you the same point when you put a certain number in place of s in the second. And so I'll rearrange. Um, I'm going to bring the 3s over and the 4 over here. And of course, everything's negative again, so I'll multiply by negative 1. Uh, that's negative 5, so when I multiply by negative 1, I get positive 5. Uh, this one here, uh, the 6s will become positive, And when I bring the 3 over here and subtract from 13, I get 10. So there's my second equation. And um, again, I'll call them equations 1 and 2. I'm going to eliminate uh, t again, so I'm going to take that first equation, and the least common multiple of 2 and 1 is 2, so I'll multiply that by 2. And so everything here gets multiplied by 2, all the coefficients become uh, 1, 3, and 5 become 2, 6, and 10. Notice they're exactly the same equation. And so uh, t's are the same, so when we subtract, uh, we end up uh, 2t minus uh, 2t is 0t and 6s minus 6s is 0s, and 10 minus 10 is 0. Now this equation means, what number do we multiply 0 by to get 0? And of course, you can put any number you want in there. Um, any integer, any decimal, any um, radical you want, any number you can think of. Pi um, is the solution to that, because 0 times anything is always 0. And so we say that s could be any real number. The funny capital R here stands for the entire set of real numbers. And so s is a member of the set of real numbers. Now, the, the interpretation of that is that that means that it doesn't matter what number you put in place of t, you get a point on the second line. And what number you put in place of s in the parameter for the second line, you get a point that's also on the first line. And so that means that the two lines are the same line. Uh, there's, so there's an infinite number of solutions here. The lines are coincident. Every point on the first line is also on the second line. And if you look at the direction vectors, you might have guessed that. Uh, negative 1, 2 is uh, 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 3, negative 6 is a multiple. We'd probably say it in that direction. Because if I multiply this by negative 3, I get this direction vector. So the direction vectors are multiple, so the lines are at least parallel. And of course, we could have checked to see if 4, 3 was on this line, or negative 1, 13 was on that line. And we would have found that they are. And that means, that again, that the lines would be coincident. Now on to three-dimensional space. Uh, there's four different ways, because we're going into, we add another dimension here. Uh, there's four different ways two lines can exist in three-dimensional space. So first of all, the lines may be parallel and distinct. Again, distinct means they're different lines, uh, in which case they have no intersection points. So for example, here's, here's two lines that are parallel and distinct. Notice that the direction vectors 2, 1, 5, and 4, 2, 10 are multiples. Uh, if you take this direction vector multiplied by 2, you get this one. Um, it's true that this point is not a point on this line, and this point is not a point on that line, so they're parallel. And we could show that. Um, you'll, you'll see some stuff like that in the examples. Um, a way to be guaranteed that two lines are parallel and distinct is you could actually find the vector that goes from 0, negative 3, 7 to 4, 0, negative 2. And if the lines are parallel and distinct, then that line, that line, that vector, sorry, should not be parallel to either 2, 1, 5 or 4, 2, 10, because uh, we'd be looking at something like this. And actually, let's do that. So let's say that that is 0, negative 3, 7, and that is 4, 0, negative 2. If the lines are not parallel, then that vector should not be parallel to the two lines. And it isn't, actually. So let's, well, let's call that the vector. Oh, we'll call it M. And again, we're thinking of the points as 0, negative 3, 7, not as a vector, and 4, 0, negative 2. And so uh, remember, you subtract the coordinates. So 4 minus 0 is, is 4. So 4, uh, 0 minus negative 3 would be positive 3, and negative 2 minus 7 would be negative 9. And you can see that that vector certainly it has is not a multiple of or a reduction of, of those two direction vectors. So it's not parallel lines, so that's that's a reason why they're parallel and distinct. 
The lines may intersect in a unique point, just like in two-dimensional space. Uh, they're non-parallel lines. They could cross in a unique point, and so there's an example of the point right there. The lines do intersect there. Now, in that case, the direction vectors for lines are not parallel. They're not multiples of one another. Now, that doesn't guarantee, as soon as you see non-parallel direction vectors, that the two lines cross in a, in a unique point. Because in three-dimensional space, there's another possibility. And we'll get into that in the next page. Oh, and I forgot this. Parallel lines have, I, I said that, but I didn't write it, have direction vectors that are parallel or multiples of one another. On to the third and fourth case. In three-dimensional space, the lines may be unparallel, not parallel, and not intersecting. And these are called skew lines. And it's difficult to draw this on a, a two-dimensional surface because we're talking in three dimensions here. This does not mean a point of intersection. There's actually some minimum distance between these two lines. And uh, if you were to take like two rulers in uh, three-dimensional space and hold them parallel, and then like let's say move one up, like just straight up, like parallel with floor up, and then uh, like turn it a bit, and it's really hard to see what that looks like, but uh, it is possible to have two lines in three-dimensional space that are not parallel and not distinct. And actually, here's a good example: if you take two pencils, drop one on the floor, and one on a table above the floor, okay? And, uh, you know, I guess it's possible to drop them so that they would land parallel, but most of the time they won't be. Uh, they're, and that, that's an example of non-parallel lines that, that, that uh, don't intersect to their skew lines. Uh, number four, the lines may be coincident, which means the same line. This is the same idea as in two-dimensional space, in which case they have an infinite number of intersection points. And here's an example in three-dimensional space of this situation. And uh, notice that the direction vectors are multiples. If I take this direction, blue, blue one here, and multiply it by negative 2, I get this one exactly. So they're, they're at least parallel. Uh, 5, 0, 2 would be a point on this line, and 1, 8, 16 would be a point on this line. If I were to find the vector between 5, 0, 2 and 1, 8, 16, uh, the vector would look like this. Uh, 1 minus 5 is negative 4. And I guess you could go 5 minus 1 if you wanted to. Uh, 8 minus 0 is 8. And 16 minus 2 is 14. And, and notice that that vector between those two points uh, is a multiple of this one. In fact, it's just that one multiplied by negative 1. And, so, uh, and that's because both points are on the line, the same line. So th uh, the lines are coincident. And of course, it looks like that. There's the second line. First one was drawn. The second one comes in and, and just draws right over top of the second one. 